Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people. We have this graph from, uh, I believe, yesterday. And hopefully, your graph looks like this one. I mean, we kind of worked on it together, so it should look like this one. Uh, maybe we didn't scale it exactly the same way. Maybe the vertical axis for you is by going by threes or fours or fives or something, I, though I would suggest not fives. Um, I assume that our horizontal axis, we all went by ones. And uh, so, yeah, so they, they should look pretty darn familiar. If, if you don't have height of the building on the vertical and stories on the horizontal, you should erase your graph and start again. This is what it should look like. Now, I believe I asked you for today to answer the last question. It was really an imperative. It told you to do something. It wasn't actually a, a question. But it said, if there was a building that had a height of 30 meters, then how many stories would that likely have? So if if I could just do this, if I could say, okay, so we have a 30 meter building, 30 meters, and we want to know how many stories that is, then what do you do? Some of you may have no idea what to do. And I'm telling you right now, this, what this, what this is asking you is a basic graph reading question, okay? This is a basic graph reading question. When they give you the height of 30 meters and they want you to find how many stories that is, this is a basic question that you have to be able to answer about graphs. It's going to get more complicated. So this, again, basic, and you will figure this out right now. So what you do is you go to where 30 meters is on your graph, which is, oh, in this area right, oh my gosh, this, the, this instrument of writing is terrible. I wonder if I can actually erase that. Let's see. Will that let me erase? Oh my gosh. I don't know if you saw it or if it's only me that sees that it was there and now it isn't. But anyway, the, oh, there, I did it again. All right, so that's at 30 meters. I'm going to do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, some of you are just visually looking at the graph and you're able to come up with an answer without actually marking anything on the graph. And I'm telling you right now, I need to see the little markings on the graph so that I know where your line of sight was looking because, see, I'm not in your brain, and I'm not in your eyeball, and so I don't know where you're looking. I need to see where you're looking, and so you're going to do this, right, like this. Oh, boy, there we go. A little dash line, something like that, over to your best fit. Oh, my gosh, this is terrible. Over to the best fit line. Once you hit the best fit line, you're going to stop going over. Then you're going to start going down. That's, ooh, 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 there we go. Oh, that's pretty good. That's not bad. That's not bad. I've had worse. Oh, oh boy. Yep, yep, yep. And boom, right about there. And I would say that it's even short, it's short of 10 and a half. It's definitely not to 11. So I'm going to say that 10 stories has to be the answer to that question. Gosh, this stylus is terrible. That's terrible. So 10 stories has to be the answer here. So, a 30 meter tall building could only fit 10 stories in it. You're not gonna fit 11, you're not gonna cram an 11th in there because it's a little more than 10. It's gonna be about 10. Now, what if, like that, that's one question that could be asked. What if I instead were to ask, uh, oh, 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 also notice, there was no data point here. There was no data point. So, it's not like you can look at your data table and figure this out. You have to have the graph with the line of best fit on the graph. So if another question might be, hey, if there's a building that has six stories, how tall would that be? So don't just blurt out an answer. Look at your graph, go to six stories, and begin marking lightly, very lightly on your graph, how you would find that, and how you would show someone else the way in which you would find it. And so while you do that, I'm going to do it as well. And so I'm going to go like this, hopefully, like that right there, on up to my best fit line. I'm going to stop at the best fit. I'm going to hang a Louie. Oh, boy, that's a little high. Right. 
Oh, right about, oh no. Yeah, I've got a problem. And it looks like it's just over 18, like 18 point something. I don't know, maybe 18 point two meters. Maybe you got exactly 18. That's not 18 point Z, that's a two. See, a Z has a line like that, and I didn't do that. Oh boy, now it is 18 Z, oh gosh. And again, I don't know if you're gonna see this erase or if, I hope, I hope you actually see it erase while I'm writing, but I don't know if you do. There's a two, that's a much better two. 18.2 meters-ish, I don't know. I mean, it's not exact, I'm estimating. So you should hopefully get somewhere around 18 meters for, that, for the answer to that question. So again, people, this, and oh, also notice, there's no data point here. No data point there either. So our line is able to make predictions between the data points. That's what line graphs are really good at. They're good at making predictions. So we don't have a building that's six stories tall, but if we did, we would expect it to be slightly, well, somewhere around 18 meters. Could be a little short, could be a little long or a little higher. It depends on, I, I suppose, your, the estimations you had on your own graph. Okay, so there's, there's basic graph reading skills. You must have those. Now, I'm gonna switch to a nice clean uh, page here. So, because there's something else I got to talk to you about. Here, we have a nice, clean, fresh graph. And I need to talk to you about slope. Oh boy, slope. Do you know what slope is? You're supposed to know what slope is because you've done this before. So, I'm going to say slope. Oh boy, this is huge. I, I'm not going to be able to fit this. Slope is the bit. Oh my gosh, that looks like a mini colon. It's supposed to be an equals sign. Slope is rise, oh no, ri oh gosh, rise over, oh no, oh gosh, rise over, run. I hope that you've heard this phrase before. Some of you may think you haven't heard this phrase before, but I'm telling you, you have. You just don't know you have. So rise over run, that means we. Need, it's going to tell us the steepness, okay? It's going to tell us the steepness of the line. And so, gosh, this, this stylus is absolutely terrible. We need two points. Two points on best, oh boy, fit. This is going to get ugly. Best fit. So you have to have two points on the best fit to find the slope because we need a rise and we need a run. Now, what you're going to need to do is look for some places on your grid, or on your best fit, I should say, that cross a grid intersection perfectly. All right, cross a grid intersection perfectly. Now, I hope that there are some on yours. Um, it may or may not be a data point. For instance, I have one down here, right, in this range right here. That actually is a data point and the line crosses a grid intersection perfectly. So I'm going to make a little mark. Actually, a little X. I'll make a little X right there. There's one point right there. Now, I need another one. And preferably one that's off to the side. Or I shouldn't say off to the side. Further away. Like, my first one's down here. My other one should be over on the other end of the best fit line. Oh my gosh, I see one. I see one. It's fantastic. I see one right there. Perfect grid intersection. What if you don't have another grid intersection? What if there's not one that is perfectly on a grid intersection? Oh boy, that's that's a problem. Um, let me let me see. Oh, this would be a good one. This would be a good one, right here. That would be a really good one. I hope you see which one I'm talking about. Why would that be a good one? Because it's perfectly on this grid line and it's halfway between this grid line, which means we can estimate really well. Now again, I don't know if you're gonna, once I erase this, I don't know if you're gonna see that I'm erasing it, or if it's gonna be like it never existed. I hope you actually see that it's erasing it. So that right there, um, you could use that one. If you don't have, let's see, that right there. That you could use because it's gonna be easy to read. Basically we need two points that are easy to read. Once you find two points, hopefully you're doing that now while I'm actually talking. If not, um, you should be doing it right now, if you haven't already. 
Oh my gosh. I'm going to project a little dashed line. This is terrible. A dashed line. This is the worst stylus I've ever, I've ever used. Dashed line straight down from the top point. From my lower point, I'm going to make a dashed line straight across over to the corner. Now, I don't know if you noticed this, but this looks to me like a triangle. What do triangles have besides three angles? They have a rise, which is the height of the triangle, and they have a run, which is the base of the triangle. We need to figure out what those dimensions are because that is going to be our rise and our run. Now, here's something else that you probably learned in math class. They probably taught you to count boxes. Oh my gosh! Don't count boxes, please. Whatever you do, do not count boxes. Counting boxes doesn't work. Well, it can work on occasion. But only if you're going by ones on your interval. Are we going by ones on our interval? No. So do not count boxes. We need actual numbers, like real numbers. So in this case, the top of my triangle is at the 32. So I'm going to write down 32 because that's the value at the top of my triangle, 32. What is the value at the bottom of my triangle? Bottom of the triangle, when I look over here on the height, it looks like that's 10. So I write down 10. The bottom of my triangle starts at 10, and it goes up to 32. How tall is my triangle then? So how tall is my triangle? What is the rise of my triangle? That's 22 for those that are following along at home. 22 what? 22 meters. Yes, there's a unit of measure. Got to have the unit. Got to have the unit of measure. Now, I also, oh boy, I have a base of my triangle. And I have to know how wide is the base because that's my run. So where does my base start? It starts at three stories. Okay, so I write down a three right here. That's a three. Where's the other end? The other end of my base is at 11. Okay, it's at 11. Whoa, boy, where, there we go. 11. I am at 11 over here. What does that mean? What is my base then? The base of my triangle is 8. That's 11 minus 3. 11 minus 3. 8. 8 what? 8 stories. Oh, my gosh. Now i got to try to write this in here, and my stylus is terrible. That wasn't, that wasn't too bad. So eight stories. Now what? Now I take my rise of 22 meters divided by my run of eight stories. Rise over run. Rise over run. Here we go. Here we go. 22 meter. Oh, oh crap. The whole thing's moving. Oh, no. This is bad. This is... I think it went back to where it was supposed to be. Oh, my gosh. That... That was disaster. That was almost disastrous. Now I have to write, oh my gosh, 22 meters. It's not right. There we go. 22 meters divided by eight stories. This, this video is taking forever. 22 meters divided by eight stories. Gosh, I don't even know what that is. I haven't even done this yet. Um, I, I, uh, 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 that's 2.75. Last I checked. 22 divided by... 8, let's see, 8, and then 16, that leaves 6 extra, and 6 out of 8 is 0.75. Yep, so that's 2.75. 2.75 what? What do you do with the unit of measure? You keep it. You keep all of it. You keep the unit of measure. That means meters slash stories. Okay, hold on. Oh my gosh, the bell just rang, but I'm not done yet, and I'm going to have people coming in here. You're going to have to be quiet. Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to go, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to, have to go somewhere else. Hold on. Oh my gosh, hold on. It's about to get, it's about to get loud in here. I had, to, I had to go to my storage room. I had to go to my storage room. Okay, okay, I'm, we're almost done. Trust me, trust me. Okay, 2.75. Where was I? Back to my pen. Okay, pen. That's meters, meters, slash... Stories. Oh boy. Oh no. It's not going to fit. Stories. That's, that's bad. 2.75 meters slash stories. Oh, I don't like the slash though. How would you write this out in a sentence? 
Oh, this is going to be even worse. The stylus, it's not good. I feel like my finger would work better than the stylus, but I, I, I can't change now. This right here, it means that this, the slope of this line is telling us that there are two... Oh, I should say there. Oh, no. Oh, gosh, don't do... All right. There. Oh, no. No, no. This is terrible. What is happening right now? There are... That's not, that's not terrible. There are 2.75 meters of, of height for every... So the slash for me, the slash for me means for every. There are 2.75 meters of height for every what? Oh, that's, that's not, that says ever. <laughs> for every... 2.75 meters of height for every what? Story. So, every story, so there are 2.75 meters of height for this build, for these buildings, for every story. That's what the slope's telling us. It is a ratio. It is a ratio of how, many, how much height you get for every one story. Oh, I should put that, for every one. Oh, that's supposed to be a one. That's, that's awful. Okay, that's all I got. All right, so at this point, you have a backside to this paper, and the backside of this paper has another data set of, uh, what is it, classes, science classes, and students. So you're going to make that graph. You're going to plot the data points. You're going to draw a best fit. You're going to answer the question at the bottom, and you're going to try to find the slope the way we just did. So, oh, my gosh. Oh, which one are you going to put where? Oh, my gosh. Okay, classes classes on that graph is the manipulative okay that's the manipulative manipulative oh gosh that means that students number of students is the responsive is everyone listening are you writing that down you should be writing that down on the on the back side of that paper you should be writing down that classes is manipulative and that numbers of students is responsive. That should tell you which axis they belong on. Classes, manipulative. Numbers of students, responsive. So, for, well, some of you for tomorrow, some of you for Thursday, that's what you need to have done. Okay, I think that's it. Have yourself a great rest of the afternoon. Oh, I know I will. Thanks. Bye.